In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice for this work session, regular meeting of Franklin Township Council was made by the posting on the bulletin board in the municipal building and the township website and electronically transmitted, transmitted to the officially designated newspapers indicating that this work session regular meeting would take place in the municipal building council chambers at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, August 9th, 2022. If we could all stand by the pledge for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for an invocation of Councilman Ram Ambassarian. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, Republic for which the nation under May those assembly here today enjoy the many offerings of our township. May we abide by the rules we have established, those of trust, fellowship, and ethics, and may we place service above self in our daily endeavors. And may we always test ourselves and our efforts to be sure they are the truth, good for all concerned, of benefit to mankind, and provide peace and understanding. Amen. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Embarrassan? Here. Council Woolen Francois? Here. Mayor Kramer? Here. Councilman Noni Jaka? Here. Council Member Potosnik? Present. Deputy Mayor Pruitt? Present. Council Woolen Udine? Here. Councilman Vassanella? Here. Councilman Wright? Thank you. We are now on to commendations and proclamations. The first, we have four of them. The first is Prostate Cancer Awareness Day. Proclamation by Councilwoman Francois. Is there someone here to receive it? Oh, okay. Oh, that was that was to present somewhere else. Okay, good. Uh, then the East Millstone First Aid Squad 75th Anniversary Proclamation by me. Come on up. Hello. Gather round. Look at you. All willing to serve. Okay. Whereas the East Millstone First Aid Squad was incorporated on June 10th, 1947, and whereas the East Millstone First Aid Squad began with 21 charter members and now has 56 members with 46 riding members and 26 EMTs and 16 cadets. And whereas the East Millstone First Aid Squad provides free basic life support services to the residents of Franklin Township and whereas the East Millstone First Aid Squad has two ambulances, one located on the east side of the township and the other on the west side to facilitate faster response times, and whereas the East Millstone First Aid Squad provides free EMT training and continuing education to adult and student members and free CPR and defibrillator training to community organizations. Now, therefore, I, Philip Kramer, the Mayor of Franklin Township, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, on behalf of the Township Council, to hereby congratulate and extend best wishes to the East Millstone First Aid Squad in celebration of their 75th anniversary. I especially want to thank them because if I'm in trouble, that's the squad that's going to be responding for me. So when they asked for a proclamation, what did I say? Come on up. I can't believe it has been um, 
75 years. I've been around for 30 of those. <clears throat> and we um, are still continuing. We're still serving the members of Franklin Township, and we're very pleased to do it at no charge. So thank you all very much. Anyone else want to say something? Most of you don't look over 55. <laughs> um, you know, and she mentioned, so one other thing I'd like to say is volunteer if you can. And she mentioned um, that it's free, and that really matters. When I, I recently had to take an ambulance ride, and they didn't even ask for my, uh, my insurance information. So I knew I was getting a bill. Now, insurance will be covering it, but it's a, lo it's a lot of work on my part to get that to happen. None of that happens with the East Millstone First Aid Squad. So I'm really grateful for them, to them. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Uden, if you can come down and do the American Disability Act proclamation. 32nd anniversary. Is someone here to receive the proclamation? Yay. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Whereas the Americans with the Disabilities Act was passed on July 26, 1990 to ensure the civil rights of citizens with disabilities. And whereas the Township of Franklin firms the principles of equality and inclusion for persons with disability as set forth for the state of New Jersey and as embodied in the ADA, the laws of the state of New Jersey and ordinance of the Township of Franklin. And whereas numerous organizations in the Township of Franklin and the State of New, Jer uh, New Jersey work with the constituents and communities to bring forth the promise of hope and freedom that is envisioned by the passage of the ADA and whereas July 26, 2022 celebrate the 32nd anniversary of the Americans with the Disabilities Act. Now therefore I, Sheepa Udin, Councilwoman and Philip Kramer, Mayor of the Township of Franklin County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, on behalf of the Township Council, do hereby extend greetings and best wishes to all who observe July 26, 2022 as Americans with Disabilities Act Awareness Day. Is there anyone? Councilman Onijaka. Yes. Come on down. They're not here? They're not here yet. Yeah. We'll continue what we're doing. So. We'll have a, the other proclamation a bit later. <laughs> of course. Good to be king. Um, all right, we are now open for public discussion. Well, we are about to open for public discussion. Do I have a motion to open to the public? So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of opening to the public say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. We are now open to the public. We will allow people five minutes to speak. You may only come up once. No yielding of time. Please state your name and address. I think that covers it. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Beverly Rabinovitz. I live at 67 Bayard Road in Canal Walk. I just want to talk about Randolph Road, which we have discussed here before. Just last week at mid-morning in the 10.15, 10.30 time, there were several 18-wheelers standing on both sides of the road with the motors running. Cars had to go into the middle of the road, like we're driving straight with the line. Um, in order to pass through. Now, we were told last time that we should take it upon ourselves to call the police, but we we're also told that someone was going to speak to Amazon. If this did take place, 
and it's still happening, perhaps you can use Stefines placed on Amazon in order to keep Randolph Road clear. It's really awful. I even tried Cottontail the next day to get to Tua, and it was just filled with trucks. It's really getting ugly, and we're not even there yet. So with additional warehouses now being built and being planned on and near Schoolhouse Road, the dangerous truck congestion on our roads is going to be an even worse nightmare. The necessary drive to ShopRite or CVS is going to have to be planned when we find what's the better hour to travel there. With our aging population at Canal Walk, the horror of catastrophic accidents is already feared. We're already talking about accidents with trucks because there's so many in the area. Good planning decisions for Canal Walk, Somerset Run, the summer fields, and the general older population have really been messed up with not great warehouse planning decisions. And I just changed that instead of saying bad. Not great warehouse planning. We hope you'll, you'll work to keep our residents safe in this traffic that is already miserable. And the diesel exhaust, the noise of pollu pollution, etc. Please help keep us safe out there. And if you haven't traveled Schoolhouse Road in that 7.30 to 8.30 slot and that 10 to quarter to 11 slot and I don't go there to supper hour, I, I recommend you try it. It's really getting ugly. Thank you. Hi, my name is Vidhu Goyal and I live at 37 Julie Court. On July 21st, my daughter was going down Jocks Lane and uh, Canal Road. She was supposed to, it's a T-junction, it was late at night, and uh, there was a missing uh, guardrail, and there were lots of trees covering the stop sign, and there is no light there. So she somehow missed that, there's a, that she was at the end of the road, and uh, she ended up in the canal. Luckily, my daughter had a window break tool. She was able to break the window and get out of the car as it was sinking and swim to safety. She also called 911. Thank you guys. I know you guys were the first responders there, and I just can't thank you guys enough. But if my daughter had not had that window break tool, she would not have been able to get out in time. And if she had not been able to swim, she would not have made it to safety. There was nobody around there. There was absolutely no light. There was absolutely no person there that could have saved her or even known that her car was there because it quickly submerged. You couldn't even see the car. Um, why is that guardrail not there? I don't know if it's you guys who are there, but I really am pleading you guys to make sure that that guardrail is there between Jocks and Canal. That Jocks lane goes straight to canal, and that canal, if you go straight, it's right into the canal. So I think the guardrail is missing from a prior accident. I know there might be some efforts to fix it in between that last accident, but July 21st, it was still not there. And because of that, my daughter's life was put at risk. And we're just thankful that she was had the presence of mind. She, it's her nightmare for the past three, four years, which is why she had that window break tool. And thank God she had the presence of mind and the will to get out of there. But I really think that we need that guardrail. I'm very happy that she did get out safely. And I know the answer about the guardrail, but the manager knows better than I. So the, the guardrail is to be replaced. We don't replace the guardrail. We have to contract that out. That guardrail, the type of guardrail that's there is dictated by the Delaware and Raritan Canal Commission. And the contractor that is the vendor that is the one who can replace it um, because of material shortages was not able to get the materials to, to do the repair when we had it ordered to be repaired. I know that the uh, that I just uh, once again approved the uh, the purchase order two weeks ago for that guardrail to be replaced in full. It's it's, it's a ma it's a ma I mean I, you know it's ironic that we talk about supply chain when we have people here talking about warehouses, but the truth is it's a supply chain issue. The guardrail that's there is dictated. The type of guardrail is dictated by the Delaware and Raritan Canal Commission, and that company that is to replace it 
doesn't have, didn't have the material to replace it. So when was the last accident where you took it out? I, I, honestly, I don't recall. Like, how long does it take I, I, is my question, because I yeah. see that every and day, I, and I, and I have, worry for the next mm -hmm. person that does that by accident I, and I understand. is not able to get out of their car. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't remember. So, so, so this was discussed in our public works meeting today, this evening. So I brought that up to the township manager that we have to do a better job <coughs> of protecting that intersection. We are going to, our traffic department is going to look at that, study that, and we, maybe we can put some more eye-catching, more put some for, lights there light, maybe, yeah, because lighting it was or, or flashing black. signs or something like that. So let our uh, traffic department do their research and, and come up with some and ideas. And can I come into those discussions somehow? Can I be involved because I feel like I have a stake in it? Um, that is not open to public. Okay. Yes. No, the, the answer is those are administrative and they're not open to the public. Yeah. So, so but we, the, we, I, I saw that uh, article and I appreciated what uh, uh, Ms. Goyle uh, was able to do. You know, hats off to her, even though, you know, there was a stop sign, she missed it somehow. It's covered by trees. You should go take a look. There are trees right in front of it. You don't see it until you're right at the stop sign. Right. And, and by then and it's too late and there's no lights. Yeah. Thank God she was, she had the presence of mind to use the tool because a lot of people would just freeze in a situation like that. So she was able to call 911. Our dispatch folks uh, were able to help her uh, through the situation. So thank God, uh, brave daughter. I'm uh, glad but, it worked but, out But okay. we are, we have noted that and we have uh, in instructions to the staff to address okay. that. Thank you. And we've instructed the staff to check out the trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. The trees. Good evening. My name is Evelyn Silverstein. I live at 11 Hardenburg Street in Canal Walk. On September 18, 2020, Governor Phil Murphy signed the New Jersey Environmental Justice Law, which requires the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection to evaluate the environmental and public health aspects of certain facilities on er overburdened communities when reviewing certain permit applications. New Jersey's groundbreaking environmental justice law, and I'll refer to it as EJ, the EJ law, the rules for the new EJ law are being promulgated by the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. And proximity to warehouses and distribution centers is high on the list of unequal health stressors it includes. Diesel emissions include nitric oxide, which interacts with ground level ozone to further reduce air quality. And even with recent improvements in fuels and filters, diesel truck emissions contain particulate matter that is especially damaging when exposures are nearby, recurring, concentrated, and cumulative. The project on Schoolhouse and Mettlers requires waivers from the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection because there are wetlands on the property. The rules for the EJ law are not yet fully in place. We residents are urging the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection to hold an EJ hearing on this case, which would be required when the rules are in effect, and to extend the public comment period regarding the wetlands waiver application. This is the wrong development in the wrong place at the wrong time. Our local officials should be protecting the environment and addressing climate change, not building warehouses on wetlands. Franklin Township should work to control a flood of warehouse development that chokes local roads with truck traffic, work, worsens air quality, and locates the giant industrial buildings on previously undeveloped land. While some advocates call for a new statewide policy to curb warehouse sprawl, and some community groups have sued their own towns for permitting warehouses, many municipalities approve the projects because they boost the local tax revenue and because officials fear lawsuits from developers if permits are denied. Warehouses result in large areas of impervious surfaces that the buildings create, generating stormwater runoff, 
impeding the recharge of an already depleted local aquifer. Open land in New Jersey is a gold mine. There's money out there that wants to come after the whole state. I'm not saying that's evil, but it's not necessarily what the communities want. Why can't Franklin Township step up to control warehouse sprawl as Branchburg did in September 2020 when they passed an ordinance that removed warehousing from a list of permitted uses in two kinds of industrial zones. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor uh, and township uh, members. Again, I thank you for the opportunity of being here at your meeting and being able to speak uh, before you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, my name is John Lopresti. I live at 22 Payne Way in the community of Canal Walk. And uh, I, I would like to thank you for recognizing the East Millstone Emergency Services Department uh, for all of their wonderful work. Uh, you probably know, Mr. Mayor, yes, you probably know that they come, they volunteer their time, they come to Canal Walk in our main ballroom and they give us lessons on CPR and various other things. So they are unbelievably wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I was asked, uh, Mr. Mayor and council members, I was asked to read a letter from one of our fellow residents of Canal Walk. His name is Jay Wald. He could not be here this evening. But I told him that I would be happy to read the letter for him to all of you. And this is how his letter goes. My name is Jay Wald. I live at 19 Patriots Way in Canal Walk. I have a statement to make regarding warehouses in general near senior developments. As folks get older, I hate to admit that, but I am. As, as folks get older, their driving skills decline. Reaction time, depth perception, and a situational awareness all decline. Uh, Mayor, just ask my wife. She'll verify that. Um, and tractor trailers are amongst the most difficult vehicles to deal with on the road with regards to their size, turning characteristics, and stopping and starting ability. To place both of them, that is senior drivers and tractor trailers, next to each other is not only contrary to one of your jobs, which is to maintain and manage safety on our roads, but it is, simply put, unconscionable. Um, I would just like to conclude, members of the council and Mr. Mayor, that I, I realize that your duties on this council are numerous. Uh, the welfare of the Franklin Township community, including its financial status, economic growth, and well-being of its residents, uh, makes it truly an awesome job for all of you. But when you look upwards towards uh, your creator, do you ask what is my most important duty? Do you hear the response, ladies and gentlemen, the safety and well-being of your residents? Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Kiki Anastasikos. I live in uh, 3204 Enclave Circle and Canal Walk. And I am a member of the Citizens Warehouse Action Group. Uh, we object to the construction of the two warehouses in the corner of Mettler's and Schoolhouse. And many of my, fr my neighbors and friends 
um, from the Citizens Action Group have already discussed many of the reasons, and we have been several times here in the past discussing several of the environmental reasons, the traffic reasons. Um, but since um, most of uh, the people prior, before me, who spoke, focused on, on the uh, traffic from the tractor trailers, I'm going to continue on that vein and focus on the impact of the diesel fuels on the health of the uh, residents of Canal Walk, approximately 2,000 of them, 65 and above, uh, which uh, we all know from COVID uh, constitutes a, uh, at high, a, risk, a group at high risk. So uh, when I looked at the EPA website, the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, there was an article and I'm only going to read the first small paragraph. Um, uh, the article was uh, in reference to learn about impacts of diesel exhaust and diesel emissions. Um, and they're focusing on human health in this particular paragraph. And I'm quoting, exposure to diesel exhaust can lead to serious health conditions like asthma, and respiratory illnesses and can worsen existing heart and lung disease, especially in children and the elderly. These conditions can result in increased numbers of emergency room visits, hospital admissions, absences from work and school, and premature deaths." End quote. So gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the construction of the warehouse on Metlers and Schoolhouse is a public health issue. When I go to the, uh, which I often do, when I go to the website, the Public Works Department website, and I look at the applications, there are two that stand out to me as a, a true disregard for the public health in the township of Franklin. The first one is clearly the one that we're concerned about, and that is the two warehouses on Metlers, uh, 240,000 square feet, um, and the, the, which is going to affect 2,000 seniors. And the second one is the application by Duke Realty right next to a proposal for two warehouses at the incredible square footage of combined two million square feet, which I even have a very hard time envisioning what a warehouse of that size would look like, but even more so what the diesel emissions from the trucks of these two humongous warehouses are going to do to the Elizabeth Avenue Elementary School, which, according to my research, houses 600 plus K through grade four children from Franklin Township. Now the reason I bring up these two warehouses is because they relate directly to what the EPA is pointing out, that the health hazard for young children and the elderly are particularly worrisome. And any responsible governing would take this into consideration. So I would like to request that you reject these two applications because not doing so would be the equivalent of negligence towards the citizens of Franklin Township. Thank you. Hi, I'm Toby Kramer. I live at 55 Bryan Court in Canal Walk. Better get a little closer to the mic, please. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, Toby Kramer, I live at 55 uh, Bryan Court in Canal Walk. I'm here tonight because this morning something happened to me that's happened to me three or four times before in the last month and a half. I was um, at a red light trying to turn left from Weston Canal onto Schoolhouse Road to go home, 
and a giant tractor trailer came, they had a green light and he starts turning. There was nowhere for him to turn. He couldn't turn. He would have hit me. I had to back up the length of at least six or seven cars back to, you know, the road um, splits into two lanes at one point. I had to back up all the way back. Luckily, there was no one behind me and I think I would have gotten a ticket if a policeman had seen me do it, but I don't know. You're shaking your head no. Something has to be done. This is the third or fourth time I have had to back up to let a tractor trailer make that right hand turn on school, from schoolhouse onto Canal Walk. I don't know if they're allowed there or not. It doesn't matter because they are there. They're there now. If you put a warehouse at, at down on Metlers, there is no way in the world that they're going to stay out of that intersection, whether you say they're allowed to or not, because that's just the way life is. This guy, I don't know if he knew where he was going or not, but I, you know, and if someone had been behind me, I don't know what would have happened or what we would have done, because he couldn't back up. So it was a disaster. So I just want you to know, this is a problem now. It's going to, you know, yes, it's going to be a problem in the future, but it's already a problem. Something has to be done right now with that intersection, like right now. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Sally Zaharchek. I live at uh, Fort Constitution Way in Canal Walk. Um, tonight you really touched my heart, and I'm going to tell you why. You wanted EMS. You spoke about prostate cancer. You talked about the Americans with Disabilities Act. And for all three of those things, I want to applaud you. My career was spent in New York City as a corporate director for healthcare companies, Empire Blue Cross Blue Shield. I spent hours in meetings with doctors. I spent hours in meetings with nurses. I handled clients like the New York Yankees and the New York Mets. And all I did from one end of the day to the other was talk about healthcare. And then, I had to watch two siblings die early of cancer. I have a husband, we talked about prostate cancer, who's been battling it early onset, and a son. I have four children who live in New Jersey and 11 grandchildren, all well-educated, all contributing members of this state, who reside in four separate towns from their parents. I have spent way more time at Sloan Kettering than I wish I had, talking to oncologists about my husband and my son and their early onset prostate cancer. We had genetic testing done on them. You want to know a little bit about prostate cancer and health in New Jersey? When the geneticists found in New York at Sloan Kettering that there was no genetic link between my 49-year-old son having early onset prostate cancer and my 55-year-old husband, when he was diagnosed, she said, and I quote, were they both raised in New Jersey? And when I said yes, we love New Jersey. We moved out of state for a while, but we chose it to come back to, and we love it. And she said, it's the cancer capital of the world. I'll give you the name of the geneticist. So if you want to know why I'm passionate, on the subject of public safety and public health, of emissions, tractor trailers. My background is insurance, healthcare insurance. Yes, guys, I understand the job you have at hand, and I know it's not an easy one. Try spending some time at Sloan Kettering trying to understand why too many people in your family have succumbed to cancer or are battling cancer, and these emissions are not helping our well-being and our health. There must be, I served for 10 years on the Chamber of Commerce Board in the county I resided in in New York. 10 years. I worked with economic developers. I worked with people drawing business. I was a business person, I understand it. There's a way to recruit healthy, solid, productive business to our communities in New Jersey. And the governor is going to get the same message you're getting tonight. And I think he's starting to hear it loud and clear. That is not killing our residents. I know you can do that. 
and I implore you to make that your major mission. Thank you. My name is Stan Zaharczak. I belong to her. But anyway, um, I want to get off the, that particular subject. I want to specifically talk about the B9 project, which is the one on Randolph, I mean on, on uh, Mettler's and uh, Schoolhouse Road. And specifically the fact that Mettler's, as you all know, is a scenic corridor. Now I took the scenic corridor ordinance out and I tried to review what it's gonna, what, what has to happen according to your ordinance in order to allow building on that site. By at minimum of five times, naturalized landscape is mentioned within this ordinance, minimum of five times and probably more sometimes that they're missed. There is no way that I can see that any landscaping trees, whatever, will cover a 40-foot wall by a football field long uh, building or wall. And they're also talking about, right in here it says, you have to enhance the visual characteristics of the township. I don't see any way that that will enhance the visual context. I mean, based on the ordinance on the scenic corridor alone, I think this application has to be seriously modified or refused totally. Thank you. Janet Goldstein, 47 Saratoga Drive, a court and canal walk. Um, so when we come here to speak about B9, we're told to take it up with the planning board. And last Wednesday, we did go to take it up with the planning board. And they were extremely offended that a group of blue-shirted, mostly senior citizens would try to speak to them about the senior car or scenic corridor ordinance, which is on the books of this township. The members of the planning board are not elected by the public. They are nominated by the political parties and confirmed by the council. And they seem to feel that members of the public who come to speak to them in the public portion of the meeting can have two minutes to speak to them. And if they don't like the topic that they're discussing, they don't even have the two minutes. And this went on until the uh, lawyer for the um, uh, application that was being uh, heard got up and told the man who was conducting the meeting that in the public portion they need to hear the public. And then this nonsense stopped. I'd like to remind you that, the, that, the, your, that you and your proxy, the planning board, that this is still a democracy and you, need, you act properly but they do not. They are part of the same democracy. They are important. They are appointed by you, and they need to hear the people, whether they talk like the, pe the topic that's being discussed or not. Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, what was the date of the meeting? I want to watch it. Last Wednesday. OK. Okay, last Wednesday. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Jim Salomos, and I live at 7315 Minute Man Lane here in Somerset within Canal Walk. And uh, believe it or not, I'm not here to talk about the Citizens Warehouse Action Group. I believe my, my co-members of the group have stated their case very clearly regarding our position on the warehouses. We don't want them, and we hope that they're never going to materialize. I'm here to talk about something I read that this township council has approved. There are 20 applicants for adult marijuana in this township, all over Veronica Avenue, Cottontail Lane, and the applicants, according to what I read, the township is all in in support of 20 applicants that want to 
manufacture, package, and sell marijuana to adults because marijuana is now available for adult use. So I'm concerned about that. And I'd like to know what the council's thoughts were in terms of how are you going to enforce those that violate the law? The law states that if you're under 21, you have no business buying marijuana. And I'm a teacher in the local school sub, and my Sundays when I hear kids say, well, it's legal now. I said, well, it's legal for adults 21 or older. If you're not 21 or older, you have no business. It's just like alcohol or tobacco. You have no business. Then I hear the response, oh, well, there's no penalty. All they can do is take it away from me. There's no consequence. And I tell them, well, there are consequences, because if the officer pulls you over, Mr. Warlock, are you going to test it? If that officer pulls you over and you fail the field sobriety test, because that cop thinks you can't drive safely, and you probably can't, you're going to get arrested, you're going to go to jail, you're going to wait 12 hours under Jones Law until your parents pick you up, and now you have a loss of license for six months, an arrest record, and wonderful things for your resume. So my thoughts are, what is the Township Council thinking when they're all in and approving, there are 20 applicants to sell, manufacture, marijuana in Franklin Township. I'd like to know what your thoughts are when you gave that all in. Thank you. Um, I can't speak for the whole council. Um, I think you, for one thing you stated, it's just like alcohol. The other thing is having a manufacturer here, having a grower here in town, is not going to change the amount of marijuana available in town. Even if we don't have retail in town, people are going to be able to get the marijuana, and they're going to be able to be able to buy it somewhere. You it's mean black gonna market? Be, it's good. No, it's going to be legal in the state. They'll go to the neighboring towns. They'll cross town lines. They'll drive farther, and have and drive farther. If you're suggesting they're going to have marijuana, then they'll drive back with marijuana farther. I, I don't think that having it in town is going to change the amount of people breaking the law. It's marijuana. not a law issue. It's a, it's a matter of consumption by youth that shouldn't be consuming things that are going to put them at risk when they I get behind the wheel. I completely agree that they shouldn't be consuming. Well, they shouldn't be consuming alcohol either, but we all know, and I have two sons that are now 30 and 27, and it's naive to think that alcohol isn't available f through illegal channels to children under the age of 21. It is, it is the responsibility of society in general to police itself, and it's the responsibility of the police department to enforce the laws. It's, yeah, I, it's state laws that are establishing this, not municipal laws, not county laws, but state laws. The township is in compliance with those state laws. Marijuana is available through delivery services as well as at, in brick-and-mortar stores. It, it, it is naive to think that this won't come here in Franklin Township because Franklin Township chose not to uh, allow for um, retail establishments to sell it or uh, commercial um, in, industrial properties for the cultivation and, uh, and manufacture. It, well, I'll close it, it by is, telling you, I know, I, I know it's, a, it's a business matter because the medical marijuana dispensaries, they generate $120,000 of cash money every day. So these recreational dispensaries, they're going to bring a lot of tax revenue into Franklin Township. I'm just fearful of the impact to the youth because they think it's legal and they can do it, and they shouldn't. It's bad. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Nicole Velba. I reside at 19 Mayher Road. Um, I'm also an employee at Elizabeth Avenue School. Um, my daughter has also gone through the school system here. Um, I'd like to speak directly about the warehouse proposed for Elizabeth Avenue, um, not just the sheer size of it, which is uh, six football fields, but also the location that it is going to be. Um, it's not only on the side of the school, but it's on the side and to the back, which basically it will encompass their entire playground area. Um, and 
this is where, you know, the children are, are at every day for recess uh, and sometimes for gym. And I really just uh, wish that it would be reconsidered um, to put this warehouse there. Uh, because, I mean, we've, people before me have spoken about all that is uh, detrimental that happens with this warehouse being there, the emissions, um, not to mention the safety of the school. Uh, now you're going to have a huge warehouse um, with who knows how many people working there um, with direct access to the school. Uh, so I really, I, I wish it would be reconsidered. Thank you. Good evening, my name's Linda Powell, 22 Buffer Drive. Um, I'm actually very glad to hear that there are so many residents that are concerned about um, the environmental and health um, consequences of fossil fuel um, pollution, and um, I want to talk about that as well, but in a different context. I was very happy to see, and I know a lot of you have I've seen me up here before, but not for a few years, and when we were fighting the compressor station that Williams Transco wanted to build down the road a piece. Um, there's a, a power plant that it, they, uh, a different company wants to build in Keysburg Woodbridge Center, which is actually closer to me and closer to the most populated section of town than that site of that um, compressor station, which is not yet to be built. Um, there's also another compressor station by the same company up in um, Branchburg, which some of you may know had an explosion several years back where 13 people were injured. This is not a very responsible company. And besides some of the diesel fuel, one of the major um, pollu pollutants are the fossil fuel companies, the power plants, and the compressor stations. And in terms of the health risks associated with, the, with these types of structures, which basically are not needed for energy in New Jersey at all, um, include but are not limited to many types of cancer, cardiovascular disease, kidney failure, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, central nervous system dis dysfunction, birth defects, poor birth outcomes, as well as premature death. Uh, benzene, in particular, causes childhood leukemia and likely other hematological cancers. And the medical literature suggests that there are no safe levels of exposure to benzene. Other studies, though, in association with neurodevelopmental disorders, including autism and neurodegenerative disorders, such as Parkinson's, ALS, and Alzheimer's. These types of, of um, power plants and compression stations are usually running 24-7, and f they're only for the profits of the fossil fuel companies that are not for energy that we need here in New Jersey or in New York or the surrounding area. Um, there is, on the agenda tonight, there's a resolution against the, the power plant in um, Keysburg section of Woodbridge, and I hope you will pass it. The Environmental Commission here in town already passed it. And there's also a rally um, Thursday night um, at the Raritan Valley Community College, 118 Lamington Road in Branchburg, in conference, grand conference room A and B. Um, it's an NJDEP hearing, at, which starts at 6 o'clock on the air permit for this other compressor station. And I fear if this compressor station goes through and gets permitted, the next one is going to, they're going to want to reopen the idea of, of the 206 down the road a piece. Um, so it, we're having a rally at 5 p.m. so if people can get out to Raritan Valley. And there's also going to be a rally on um, August 17th in front of um, Town Hall in Woodbridge at 6.30 um, protesting the Keensburg um, power plant and I hope people can come out to that as well. And that's, and uh, oh, the other thing was the um, community energy aggregation ordinance. And I feel that at least in some little way, 
if we can work together as a town and the township can can buy clean energy, um, at least in part for the community, it's a way for uh, me and other people who can't afford their own, our own sol solar panels to get cleaner energy and move towards a cleaner future because if we don't do that with the climate change in New Jersey, which is the fastest warming state in the United States, and we all know from floods and um, and fires and other disasters that climate change is only getting worse unless we turn away, away from fossil fuels. So I hope we can move forward with the energy aggregation and get more clean energy for um, our residents. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, Charlie Cradiville, I'm the Central Jersey Organizer with Food and Water Watch. Our New Jersey office is uh, at 100 Byard Street in downtown New Brunswick. And I did want to uh, echo the sentiments and uh, thank the Council and Mayor for Agenda Item S under Resolutions, the resolution opposing the construction of the CPV Keysby Power Plant. For those who may not be aware, despite all we know about the impacts of air pollution on human health and the impacts of greenhouse gases, on the Earth's climate, there are still plans afoot for expanding fossil fuel infrastructure right here in central Jersey. Linda just told you about a, a DEP hearing that's taken place this week um, regarding a compressor station in this county. Uh, but there's also this very disturbing and concerning plan to build a 630 megawatt gas-fired power plant in the Caseby section of Woodbridge. And uh, it's actually a private company called CPV that wants to build this plant next to their existing 725 megawatt gas plant. And they currently have an air pollution permit application pending before the New Jersey Devi Department of Environmental Protection. And in that application, they say they're seeking approval to emit up to 2.37 million additional tons of greenhouse gases, making that facility one of the largest climate polluters in the entire state of New Jersey. Now, today was just the latest oppressively hot summer day. Um, days like this often come with poor air quality as ground level ozone forms and makes it harder for vulnerable populations to breathe. And we will have more days like this if we continue to build more fossil fuel power stations like the proposal that's on the table right now. And uh, for the record, this would be less than eight miles outside of Franklin Township. Um, of course, climate change affects us all, and uh, climate change does bring with it more frequent and extreme storms, uh, devastating droughts and floods, and those lead to losses of life, damage to property, and lots of unnecessary costs to local and county governments. I also want to emphasize it's not just the greenhouse gases we should be concerned about. Straight from the pending application, I'll read to you the uh, you know, proposed emissions. They're asking for permission to pollute an additional 148 tons of nitrogen oxides, 125 tons of ammonia, 123 tons of particulate matter, 110 tons of carbon monoxide, 77 tons of total suspended particles, 49.9 tons of volatile organic compounds, 39.9 tons of sulfur dioxide, and 25.1 tons of sulfuric acid mist. And that is just some of the uh, compounds and chemicals that they want permission to put into the air each and every year. And I will note, um, you know, like I said, we're uh, 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 about eight miles outside of this site. Um, the vast majority of the particulate matter that would be emitted is PM 2.5, the more um, finer particulates that are smaller. And according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, those particles can travel hundreds of miles. So they will be breathed in by human beings uh, in this state and other states. But the closer you are, the more you're going to get. And uh, I'll note for the record, we already have six operational fossil fuel power stations in Middlesex County. This would make seven. And uh, the really concerning thing about particulate matter, that 
um, particulate matter is it embeds itself deep inside human lungs and stays with you for the rest of your life. So uh, we definitely don't need any more of it. I know we already heard about uh, particulate matter and um, carcinogens and, and, and how we are. Unfortunately, um, one of the states that's most deeply affected by cancers. And uh, taking this step tonight will make Franklin Township the fifth municipality to stand against this uh, very bad proposal to pollute our air and make climate change even worse. So I just wanted to thank you for putting it on your agenda, encourage you to vote yes for it tonight. And I also want to thank the residents who've been instrumental in advancing this uh, resolution and also uh, express my deep gratitude to the Environmental Commission for recommending this and um, spending so much time evaluating this issue and, and making such a strong recommendation. So I encourage you to vote yes on this. Thank you all. Good evening. My name is Jess Saba, 146 Emerson Road, Somerset. I came here to congratulate the township, the council particularly, for taking too serious action or planning to take too serious action uh, for environment. One, opposing Kisby, which is in Woodbridge and is going, and it was talked about, I'm not going to elaborate on that, but it's, is going to make the second power plant, gas frag power plant there. And none of it, none of what it produces is used in New Jersey. None of it. Even at this point, what it produces right now with the first power plant is more than they need is being used in New Jersey. So thank you for going to support it and being the fifth township town that is uh, supporting this and putting pressure on the EPA and uh, DEP and um, the governor to reject this. That's one congratulation. And we have to be, you know, I, I know you are going to vote for it and there have been a lot of support for that. Also for energy aggregation. And I am very happy that you are doing this, and I'm hoping that we are going to, you are going to pass a very serious resolution. You have offered an alternative to what was proposed, and I hope that this resolution that you are going to have, uh, ordinance that you are going to pass, is what it makes the other one much even better than that one. So, uh, so I'm, I have been, I have come here many times and I said I'm so proud of and happy to be in, 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 in the township. But, and I have talked about also about the environment before. I told you, I, if you do the last time I was here, I talked about and the trucks, how many trucks are on, this, on, on the road on Eastern Avenue at all hours and how traffic is high, much, much higher than before. And the problem for the environment for that. But I was really disappointed. It was very heartbreaking for me for the three items that it came up. One, the guardrail. I don't care how long it was. I think maybe you can put some, you know, some containers with stone in it so people see it and color it. I cannot believe this. This is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. My, my heart break, broke for you and your daughter particularly. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Thank you for coming and talking about this. We should get together more often. We should have community in this community. We have to have gatherings at least once a month or every other month to see what's going on. Many people, including myself, I don't get a chance. I really don't get a chance to read everything Ms. Saba, that's you have to address the council. I'm sorry. I am orga I'm organizing at the same time, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I didn't mean to do that. But uh, you got me there. But, and also, we, you are doing two things. You are doing two different things, three different things at the same time. You are expanding all of these warehouses. At the same time, you are fighting, you are going to do things on environment. Do you really believe in it? Do you understand what's going on? We have a co more compressor. It was four years for stopping one compressor. Now you are going to have another one. The same, the same disgusting 
abusive company is coming from another door and trying to get in, it should be rejected to begin start with. And you know, please, this place is much, you are all much better people than what is going on. Please, stand up. And whatever you can't do there, get us. Let us know what's going on and we take care of them. Thank you. In civil resistance, you are, really, you are getting us to engage in civil resistance. And you know, I, I, I believe in that. I took pledge to that years ago. Pledge of nonviolence resistance. We are going to resist them in every which way we can. We cannot have two environmental projects, very, very strong, very powerful. At the same time, from the other hand, we are doing what we are doing. Thank you very much. Lawrence Rivera, 29, Saratoga Court in Canal Walk. I have three questions to pose to this panel. The first is, when is enough enough? We have, we have warehouses from uh, exit 12, coming down River Road, all the way down through Cottontail Road to Schoolhouse Road and beyond. They're not, some of these are monstrosities, 40 foot high, they're ugly, and they don't serve that much purpose to the community. My, my second question that I want to pose is, What percentage of the taxes that we get from, from these warehouses go to offset the damage that is done health-wise, destroying the beautiful area that was once farmland, uh, lovely uh, resident, uh, residential areas for homes? And well, I think that's probably enough I, for you to deal with. My third one, I don't think you're ever going to have an answer to. What happens to these warehouses when they become derelict? They have no, no longer served any economic purpose, and they become abandoned like uh, box stores on Eastern Avenue. They just sit there until they, they uh, either get torn down uh, and, and find new life. Thank you. Bear with me because I've changed just about everything <clears throat> that I was going to address. One of those mornings where I woke up and I wasn't sure if I needed coffee, water, or cookie. And then I thought, hell, maybe I should just get the hell out of Franklin Township. Name and address, please. I'm getting to it, Mayor. Shirley Tallman, 57 Tallman Lane. And I've been here before. Uh, the first thing that I, I don't want to uh, let go is uh, Mr. Warno Warnocker, our, uh, our township. Am I pronouncing it right? Vorn Vornlocker. I won't make that mistake again. All right. I won't make that mistake again. My apology. Vornlocker. I think the buck stops with you here. You have to talk into the mic. These are actual photographs that I took, uh, just, just one of many, because we all use um, Randolph. I mean, it's so close. It, it's, a, it's a connecting road to everywhere that I go. And uh, you can see, hopefully, I, I made the pictures as large as I could, and I'm going to leave this here, that uh, many laws are being broken here. Uh, one is an 18-wheeler uh, on the wrong side of the road idling, uh, cars passing on the wrong lane because it's only a two-lane road and they can't get through because we've got an 18-wheeler idling. And our councilwoman, uh, I know she's here tonight, uh, she has taken this on. She has called Amazon 
But Amazon is not listening. Let's get real. They're not listening. They can't control it. They can't control it. Well, no, I take that back. They can control it, but they won't. And uh, my point to you is that you set this mess in motion, please. So you're going to have to control it, Mr. Vornlocker. I, I don't know Not how. tomorrow, <laughs> but as soon as possible. I don't know how I set this mess in motion, but what I can tell you is that the police department has met with Amazon management about addressing those concerns about trucks parked there. There is more than Amazon there. There is more than Amazon on Randolph Road. Randolph Road is a commercial property and, gets and all of those businesses, including House Foods and the other warehouses, get deliveries. Well, I'm we not can certain spread that the those blame trucks around. are related. We'll, so, split, yeah. we'll spread the blame around, mm -hmm. but the fact remains that it has become a very, very dangerous place to drive, and that is a main thoroughfare for the people, how many thousands of people, taxpayers, have to use that road, Randolph. And I can't even imagine, I can't even imagine what it's going to look like if this god-awful mess happens over in uh, Mettler's and Schoolhouse. Can you? Okay, enough said about that, because I'm going to follow up with Mr. Vornlocker, and I, and I call the police. Oh, get this one. I didn't get a picture of it. I have s pictures for you. For you, okay. A 18-wheeler, I don't know if it was belonged to Amazon or the food place or whatever, parked in the lane in the wrong direction, idling. Wrong direction, idling, taking up one lane, and the rest of us are trying to figure out how in the heck to navigate Randolph. This is real. This is really happening. It happens every day. And, and I don't want to say much more about it because I have some other important things that I would like to briefly mention at least. But yeah, You have 40 seconds. Well, I was going to beg for forgiveness and try to get another minute. And if they will fall on death. All right, ears. okay, all right. Uh, just to clarify, the meeting that was so insulting to us Mr. Orsini was chairing the meeting, and we go to so many of the meetings now, you'll have to forgive us. We can't recall if it was planning or zoning, but we're thinking it was planning. It was planning if Mr. Orsini was there. Okay, all right, so we got that cleared up. I received uh, an email from the Sierra Club. Sorry, that's your time. Oh. What about the I'm sorry. exchange with the manager? That counts in your time, if you ask a question. Okay, I'll, it can, it'll keep. It'll okay. keep for the next meeting. Hi, um, I'm Jan Brandt, and I live at 22 Bryant Court in Canal Walk in Somerset. And um, I'm new to the area. I moved to New Jersey from Maryland in April 2021. I have something in common with the mayor. He moved from Maryland, too. And um, I was just visiting yesterday and drove back today, came to the meeting. I didn't want to miss this. And I must say, no trucks around in Maryland as much as there are in New Jersey. And um, and with trucks, you know, they build separate highways for trucks, and there's a reason why they do that is because it's really dangerous when people, especially two-way streets like we have in Somerset, when people are on the road and trucks are on the road, and, and that's why there's separate highways for that. But um, it seems like in the, in the past year, huge warehouses that measure six football fields are just popping up all over uh, Somerset. And so I did my research to just find out what must have happened like in the last couple years that all of a sudden all these massive warehouses are, are building up. And so what my research led me to was a meeting on December 8th, 2020. The township council members uh, passed an ordinance that 
was um, made a lot of changes, and this is why there's lots and lots of warehouses popping up. If you can't recall what was happening December 8th, 2020 in New Jersey, there was uh, December 7th, there was the highest amount of COVID cases in New Jersey, over 6,000 cases. December 8th was the second highest amount of COVID cases. Hospitals were packed. You couldn't get a hospital bed, and there were 17,000 deaths in New Jersey thus far. And that day, you all, December 8th, you had a Zoom meeting, and I watched it online, so um, it was very interesting. You passed this ordinance, and two council people asked, are these going to affect the residents in New Jersey? And the answer was, no, no, we're just combining the ordinance. So there's one set of rules, and that's all. You don't have to worry. There's not going to be any changes. And, um, and we want to occupy empty buildings. But let me tell you what those changes were that weren't said on that meeting via Zoom. And this is from, um, um, I'm reading from ordinances here. You have, it used to be that no warehouse building shall be higher than one story in any event. No warehouse building shall be higher than 30 feet. Lot coverage shall not exceed 40%. Warehouses used to have to be on five acres. Now it changed to two acres. Impervious, uh, you know, and it, it just, now we have, we have warehouses, six football fields. That wasn't happening before December 8th, 2020. It's really a shame. And I also got the list of people that were notified for that meeting. There's only two people that showed up at Zoom on that meeting that day. Did you all wonder what was wrong, why only two people showed up when you're making these massive changes? And one person showed up and he said, like, oh, I'm a builder and I just got this last week and I'm just wondering how does this affect me? And the other person called up and had no clue what it even meant. But that's all the people that showed up on that Zoom meeting. It's really a shame. And I went, I got the list of people that from Canal Walk that should have gotten letters, they said they didn't get any letters. And also, you got to think about some of the people, if they did get letters, would have been sent to Flake, Florida. You get a week to notify people that all these changes, that warehouses now are going to be six football fields on, five acre, on two acres instead of one story on five acres. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, how could you change an ordinance that would affect the lives of all the residents of Franklin Township during what was happening December 8th, 2020? I mean, do you think people were thinking about coming and getting on Zoom and arguing? They're having family members dying. People are in the hospital. I, in fact, the house that I bought, two people had died of COVID in that house in September. All right? The council doesn't have a pulse of what's happening in this township. Since that change, the township hasn't been able to tell us how many warehouses, how many empty buildings. You said that you did that ordinance so you'd fill out empty buildings. No, buildings are being planned on, on now wetlands and, and free land. It's not true. You really misled the public. Residents of the Franklin Township deserve better. They deserve to be in a safe place. Warehouses affect all aspects of our lives, our well-being. I can't believe it's being built next to a school, a, a warehouse, six football fields. I'm a retired school nurse. I hope there's a school nurse in that building because the cases of asthma, and I hope those people over there that do the, the 911 calls because people, are, kids are going to get sick. This is just not fair what you all are doing. I recommend a moratorium. Other places in New Jersey have done it on warehouse until the township gets a pulse on what's going on here. I mean, you guys have no clue. We, we have asked at meetings, we have asked you all, how many warehouses have you built? Oh, I don't know. How many warehouses and empty buildings? Uh, I don't know. We never get an answer. That's just not right what's happening here. Just like you were able to change that ordinance December 8th, 2020, that to make it all different so that every, all these ordinances were combined, you could change what's going on now. Anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, Jim Johnston at 34 uh, Norwich Place. Um, I just wanted to say that I agree with the previous, one of the previous speakers about what transpired at that planning board meeting last week. Uh, it's, on the, it's, on the, it's, on, it's on the Franklin Township YouTube channel. Everyone should go look at that. Uh, August 3rd, the planning board meeting. I, 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 I wasn't there, but I watched it on, the, on YouTube. I, I could not believe what I was seeing. I, I, was, I, I still can't believe it. <laughs> uh, the, 
You know, I think the problem is that the, the, the like she said, the, the, the members of the planning board, they're, they're not elected officials. They are uh, 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 appointed bureaucrats. And I, I think they, they, they view their, their planning board as their own personal kingdom that they can do anything they want and they don't care what the public wants. They, they just want to do their own thing and members of the public come out here and talk and they, and they talk down to us in a very condescending manner. It's, it's unbelievable. And I, I, so so please, please, have a talk, please have a talk with them to tell them that, that we do not work for them. They work for us. Someone should tell them that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else wishing to speak? Mayor, seeing no one else coming. Oh, there is some coming. Ann Cohen, 66 Bayard Road in Canal Walk. And by the way, I was the first person that was um, spoken to in a manner that I don't let my enemies speak to me. Nobody speaks to me with that kind of disrespect as I was spoken to last week. I have every right to my two minutes or five minutes or whatever it is because I would give you the same respect. So. I just wanted to tell you that was very, very uncomfortable. Over the last three months, Amazon has canceled plans for nearly 10 million square foot of warehouse, by, warehouse space. A space glut is costing on the heels of the pandemic. Now, I do understand that part of the reason why all these warehouses may be springing up is because People couldn't go out and everyone started ordering online. Well, you know something? That's not going to continue forever, especially from a place like ours, which has a lot of people that are willing at this point to go into stores and buy because of all of this. And I think that there it has been all kinds of articles written and things on the news and on the TV where people are just not wanting this to happen and not wanting this to continue. I know it's business. I know there's revenue involved. I know that there's a lot more than just hurt feelings and, and fear, but we, we pay to live here. We pay to live here. We worked hard to be in this position at this stage of our lives, and quite frankly, we don't want to die from living in Franklin Township. Anyone else? Mayor, seeing, I believe, no one else looking to come forward, I'll motion at this time to close the public portion. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of closing public portion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Public portion is closed. Um, we have, uh, we're going back on the agenda to the proclamation. Uh, Councilman Oni Jaka. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Oh, one, just one. You can come over here with me. Come on, stand where the king will have a seat. You can see, you can see. Only the king will sit down. <laughs> okay. Amen. On behalf of uh, 
African and Western African community in Franklin. Oh. On behalf of West African and African community in Franklin, we wish you happy birthday. <laughs> okay. On behalf of Franklin Township, our mayor, Anomale. Yes, we gave it to him. Uh, yes, ordained by uh, Oni of Ife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and the entire council, we welcome you all. Especially the Oba Adirami, you are welcome. Township, briefly. Franklin Township is one of the best places to live in New, New Jersey. Living in, Tans in Franklin Township offers the resident the dense feelings of togetherness, feeling at home, regardless of where you come from, because of its diversity. You can see from Nigeria, I'm part of Franklin Council. Before I move forward, I have some dignitaries that are here in Franklin to receive you. I have uh, Alamide, Dr. Honorable Alamide from Newark. He's a commissioner in Newark. He's a, a good advocate of a West African community, and he has been very, very useful to the community. Welcome you too. Come over the Prince. Come over the Prince Daniel Akaide represent the Nigerian community in Franklin. He's here with us. And my wife is here. My wife is here. And I have um, Chief. So that you are here to recognize you. And I have Dr. Godwin Babs Omolala, who was a member of the, the planning board. And it's a very... Uh, Support, it's very supportive of uh, African. So we don't have much time. Um, we'll move forward. Allow me there. Yes. So we'll do proper introduction of the king. Yes. Well, I'm about to finish up. Hello, the Mayor. Thanks for having us. Council members, our protocol observed. The city of Franklin, thanks for having us here. My name is Honorable Alamide Davis Talabi. I'm a taxi commissioner in the city of Newark, originally from Nigeria, and I'm happy to be here in Franklin. You all are beautiful people, so thank you for having us. It's an honor to receive His Royal Highness. We received him today at uh, the city of Newark, and it's also good to have him here tonight to be received in the city of Franklin. Uh, two years ago, we received Oni of Ife in Newark, and we brought him to Franklin. Franklin is our second home, so thank you for having us. His Royal Highness Dr. Ambassador Olushegu Aderemi, JP, is a great achiever, a philanthropist, a caring father, a loving and doting husband, an aspirated builder and motivator, an employer of labor, but most importantly, is the king of Atayero of Arumoko Kingdom in Nikiti, Nigeria. We are honored to have you here to recognize you for all the awesome things you're doing, for being a father figure to many Nigerians, and both in Nigeria and those in the diaspora. And we just say thank you so much. Thank you. You can come here now and receive your. I'll give you the key. Great honor. Part of us here now. Half of uh, Franklin Township. Thank you. I will call him. Uh, over. Come over. Good evening, uh, everybody. 
before I make a switch, I want to uh, give the king maybe two minutes to just uh, say something and greet our mayor and the township. The Honorable Mayor, all members of the council, and the township of Franklin, you all are great people. It gives me great joy and honor to be here today and to accept all the wonderful honors that you have given me today. Most especially, the key township of Franklin. This is to confirm the fact that Franklin is the second home of Odudua, which is the progenitor of all the Yoruba race in Africa. We believe we are from every part of the world with our source in Ilefe. My representative of Ududua, which is the owner of Ife, has been here two years ago. And the good Lord and probably destiny has made it for me to be here also to receive the same honor. We appreciate this on behalf of the entire people of Yoruba race in the entire Africa and Nigeria especially. We say thank you for this. And I assure you that we're not going to take it for granted this is our second home. Count us as part of you. Anytime, we we'll always come here. Mayor, today bring your birthday, and you're doing this great honor again. I will take this back home, and I'm very sure the entire Yorubaris will appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, uh, the Royal Highness, uh, Olusegun Adiremi, the attire of Aromako Kingdom of Nigeria. Um, on behalf of the West African community in the Township of Franklin, especially the Nigeria sec sector, I want to thank everyone, especially our mayor, for giving us the opportunity to welcome our king from Nigeria into the township and for giving him a key to the township. We appreciate you and we also appreciate the council members for granting us, for giving us this opportunity also. Thanks to everybody in this town. We have been part of this town for a very long time. I've lived almost 26 years in this town and so many of us, we have also lived here. Most of our kids went to school in the Franklin Township and everybody's doing very well. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here, you know, to be part of the American society. We, we, are, we are grateful. So, so on behalf of every one of us, I want to say thank you. Thanks to everybody for welcoming <laughs> Dr. Thank you. Your Majesty, thank you very much for honoring us with your presence, for caring enough about Franklin to come to visit you have many subjects here, um, and they are fruitful citizens of our town uh, that add to the richness and diversity of our town. Thank you for coming. You honor us with your presence. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Bob Somolala. If there's anyone in Franklin Township that doesn't recognize that we have a great mayor, that person should rethink again. Mayor Kramer made it possible for we, Nigeria, to excel, participate in community development. I was a member of the planning committee, and I know the contribution that we made to make sure that the 
uh, uh, the uh, community of uh, every segment of the community is welcome. He made it possible, and no doubt he will continue to be champion as a Nigerian. In fact, we gave me we gave him a name. What's his name again? That means a son that came from abroad. That is the name we gave him. So thank you, Mayor, for this audience and also all the council members. <laughs> thank you. Honorable Mayor, so the king wants to give you a title, a chief title. The council members and all the good people of Franklin, I'm happy and I want to use this opportunity to pronounce chief tenancy title for our Honorable Mayor. And that title is Bobani. Wow. So from today, if you are addressing him, you have to put Shiv <laughs> before his name. Bobani means he that has made the king proud. That is Bobani. Please, we'll continue to uh, say this so that you can all understand it. Can you all say Bobani? Bobani. 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 And so shall it be. Amen. I think it means he will not take off his mask. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> Captain Doctor. <laughs> um, <laughs> Deputy Mayor asked for a point of personal preference. I got stuck. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge both to the public that has joined us and the public uh, that is watching us, as well as my colleagues, um, and to apologize. Um, I have a bit of a drive ahead of me um, down to South Jersey. Um, despite being relatively young, um, I am increasingly getting weary of driving at night long distances. Um, so I will uh, unfortunately have to take my leave and I will not be able to support the or, or be able to vote in support of the ordinances. Um, but I, I think it was well worth it. Um, just to hear everything that the public shared with us today. Um, thank you for your vulnerability, um, and thank you for your assertiveness. Um, I'll have a lot to think about whilst uh, a couple hours drive, um, but I did want to acknowledge that and give my sincere apologies uh, for that. So I'm going to go to the bathroom and get on the road. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, we're on to council comments. Um, Let's start with uh, Council Member Potasnik. We have a lot of, uh, let me remind everyone, we have a long meeting in front of us. Um, thank you, Mayor. I don't have very much, but uh, I did want to say to earlier today, I had a really nice opportunity to be with Senators Menendez and Booker uh, with the Inflation Reduction Act having passed the Senate this past Sunday, uh, which is going to be much needed relief in a whole bunch of areas in particular and the health care area and for our seniors uh, total cap uh, of up to two thousand dollars on prescription drug costs um, insulin capped for medicare recipients at thirty five dollars and then in the clean energy space the largest investment ever in combating climate change of 370 million dollars with 60 million a billion uh, dedicated to environmental justice communities so um, has to pass the House still, um, but it was really nice to see that great, strong leadership from our leaders in the New Jersey, um, uh, that represent New Jersey in the, in the Senate for Congress. Um, and I, I, folks already talked about the uh, energy aggregation that's on the agenda, and I know Council's familiar with that, and the Keysby resolution that was passed by the Environmental Commission, which I'm the liaison to, uh, was already addressed as well, which uh, I, I'm supportive of. 
Um, and uh, there was one gentleman that talked about marijuana. Um, I, I, I believe I have this right. Uh, someone can correct me, but um, when we're approving these 20 different sites, I don't want folks to think that they're going to build or locate all of those sites. That just is part of their application, and the state has a very limited number of licenses that it's going to give, and I guarantee you they're not all going to come to Franklin, um, but, you know, that's why that's happening. And then just one other thing that came to mind, which is, it's, it always surprises me, the idea that you can't drink until you're 21, when you can die for your country at 18. Um, so, you know, somewhere in between, we make these laws, but they don't always make sense. And it struck me, I know marijuana is new for a lot of folks, alcohol's been around for a long time, um, but we need to stay vigilant, too, around what people's rights are. And, you know, if you're willing to stand up and, and give your life for our freedom and not be able to partake in certain aspects of it, um, it's sort of shocking to me. So uh, I know it all comes from a good place, and we're in this all together. But I, I don't think you have to worry about all 20 or all of them come popping up um, in, in the town at this point. So um, that's all my comments for this evening. I appreciate seeing everyone. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Embarrassing. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> um, I just wanted to uh, say uh, to the group from Canal Walk, uh, by the way, I live in Renaissance, so I'm uh, 55 plus, uh, as you can tell. I'm the oldest member. Uh, after Ted Chase left the council, I became the oldest member of the council. Um, anyway, um, I w I'm also a uh, planning board um, com commissioner, member, whatever you want to call me. Uh, I represent the council there. Um, I have to agree with the, some of the comments here. The meeting got out of hand. Uh, there was, um, uh, there could have been a better exchange uh, and a better decorum in the whole uh, uh, meeting. Um, but I wanted to assure you uh, that we have taken uh, some steps. Uh, we have spoken to some um, people. So we are hoping that going forward, uh, such uh, situation would not repeat. Um, so I just want to tell you, so the, the, the public uh, portion of the meeting is not really meant to uh, be an exchange between um, public and <coughs> the uh, applicant, uh, per se. It's really you're expressing your opinion about something. And uh, hopefully, you know, um, we appreciate hearing from you. Uh, we have taken action. Um, whatever action we could, uh, as soon as we heard some of the concerns, uh, the council acted on the new, new yeah. ordinance and so on. Mm, so you are respected, your voices are heard. Um, to the extent that we can act, uh, we will. Um, anyway, so uh, beyond that, I have a number of other things that uh, I wanted to uh, report on Mayor. Uh, the uh, Human Relations Commission had a meeting on July 27th, uh, school superintendent Jan Ravali and uh, the public relations manager uh, Mary Clark uh, were the attendees. I think we had a very good discussion about the security <coughs> at the school system, especially uh, after the shooting at the Uvalde, Texas uh, incident. Um, superintendent did assure us that uh, uh, a situation like the cops could not find the key to the classrooms to get in, uh, would not uh, occur here. Um, there, there's key available with the school resource officer, is a member of the uh, Franklin Police Department, is stationed there, uh, has the keys to master key uh, to all the classrooms. So, um, so along those lines, uh, they are looking at other improvements uh, to the safety and security of the kids uh, in the high school system. So it was a very uh, very good discussion, and, and um, uh, thanks to the school uh, superintendent uh, for coming over. Uh, the next uh, meeting with uh, Human Relations Commission would be on the Octo August 24th. Uh, the guidance counselor supervisor, uh, Boxdale, would be uh, the guest speaker. Uh, further, there was a board meeting of uh, the Sewerage Authority on August 2nd. Um, the, uh, pro uh, the executive director presented a uh, proposed budget, um, which calls for a modest uh, increase of uh, uh, <coughs> sewerage rates to, I think, an average household 
would pay about $23 more uh, per year. Um, so that's uh, not significant, but it is uh, going to be an increase. That, that proposal, that budget was presented uh, in the last um, <clears throat> also pleased to report some um, uh, new businesses that are coming into town. Uh, August 4th uh, saw the Apna Bazaar, a uh, huge uh, uh, farm market kind of a, sh a grocery shop opened up on Route 27. Um, it was a great affair. If you went to that uh, uh, parking lot, you couldn't find a parking spot that day. A lot of people showed up and, it, and, and more and more businesses are coming to uh, Franklin and we are happy to welcome them. Uh, today I attended a uh, solar plant uh, inauguration at the center school, uh, a 611 kilowatt <coughs> solar plant um, that included rooftop solar uh, panels as well as uh, carports uh, that had the solar panels. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's along the lines of uh, what we are talking about that's um, going to offset uh, a lot of uh, greenhouse uh, uh, gas emissions, carbon dioxide, um, and methane, and those, so on and so forth. As, uh, as well as, I think that one of those statistics was it's also going to, um, it's, it's equivalent to 112 cars running for the whole year. Uh, it's, it's, it's going offset. So that's a great thing uh, for the township and, and for the environment. And that we, I'm, I'm a strong supporter of uh, um, green energy and alternative uh, forms of uh, um, energy supplies uh, to homes and commercial spaces and everything. So we, we promote that here. Um, and I think we had also just attended a public works committee meeting. Um, my colleague would uh, give more update on that. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman Kimberly Francois. Since my councilman addressed the marijuana application situation, I'm not going to be redundant. And since you addressed the situation with the planning board, I'm not going to be redundant. The one thing I do want to say, the canal walk situation, there ought to be something we can do in the interim, even though there's a supply chain shortage, to make that area safe in the meantime. We should not let that go on. We have to do something to fix that. If it's cutting down trees, if it's putting up lights, whatever we need to do to make that area safe, we got to get on that right away. That's you mean something canal, we can control. You mean Canal Road? Canal Road. What did I say? Canal Road. Canal Road. I'm sorry. <laughs> canal Road. <laughs> that that area where the accident happened. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Lots of canals. <laughs> Lots of yes. Uh, Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. And. Thank you, Councilman Francois, because it's exactly what I was thinking, and I know our manager uh, will do every effort in that capacity, in that aspect of things. But the public, we have a lot of roadways, and uh, by all means, if you see that there's any, whether it's a, a down branch or anything, often it's trees growing, blocking any signage, please um, report it to our, our port all, I believe, is the proper place. Um, uh, because we have fantastic public works and we have fantastic police department, but if you see something, our manager, I know when I've sent him messages, sometimes the same day, a branch that could be blocking any kind of no left turn, whatever it is. So please, we, we will be happy to, to field that call and I'm sure you'll get a timely response either through the portal or, or through um, uh, a phone call. Uh, as um, Councilman mentioned we had a public works meeting tonight, basically uh, covering a lot of subjects, Some, a lot of them still in the works, but uh, update on a rotary paving, which is uh, uh, a little behind schedule, but still everything we planned on getting done this year is getting done um, through bids that have been put out or right now are out to bid. And it, again, it is our most aggressive year for paving, I believe, in Franklin's history. Um, the one item that uh, we were discussing is that as new water meters will be put in, whether it's a new construction of a home or a business or existing water meters that are part of our program that every few decades, as deemed, you know, at the end of lifespan, the little meter that tells us how much water we use. 
Um, going forward, we'll be locating them uh, in the right of way, usually near where the water access point is anyway. Those are read automatically, so uh, I believe wireless readings. But for a variety of reasons which are, are beneficial for our water operation, we'll be having those meters uh, in the right of way. No cost to the, um, to the um, homeowner or business owner as they'll be replaced as part of our ongoing replacement program. Um, I believe that's, oh, we did get some good news because I know we, uh, some council people, and I know uh, Councilman Udine had brought it forward to us with the idea of seeing if there's a way we can uh, modify our water fountains, um, which I guess now is more important than ever, uh, in our parks uh, because there's certain ones that can be converted to where dogs, which thankfully we have many in Franklin, um, could be uh, retrofitted so that there can be an attachment where it's easy for a dog to be given water also, especially obviously in, in any weather, especially the heat. But we found out fortunately that ours uh, are the type that will only cost in the hundreds as opposed to the thousands. So we're looking next year at perhaps adding those. And I, you know, Councilwoman Udine uh, hopefully will be happy we got that information today. Um, little thing, but something we're, we're trying to do. Um, keep it in mind. Uh, people's pets and needs. Um, I think that's it, Mayor. I Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Councilwoman Udeen. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, residents. Uh, first off, I want to thank Canal Walk team for coming out here and voicing your opinion. I think it's, you know, it, it shows us a lot of um, visibility to what you guys see on day to day by living there versus us on the other side sometimes. So thank you for bringing in pictures and voicing your opinion and continuing to watch the roads for us and reporting bad uh, or violating, people that are violating like trucks when they're out there um, and continue to do that because that way we can also continue to report those out and make sure that um, bad behaviors of people driving out and double parking or, you know, idling can stop. So thank you for continuously doing that on every meeting. Um, I'm excited about more businesses coming to Franklin. I think it's nice to see some of those, uh, uh, I'm going to say blank uh, plaz plazas that are out there that are getting full now. So please do go out there, um, shop local, support local businesses. We need them in town. Right, so as things are opening up, as you can see, there's another one opening up um, later this week. Make sure you guys get out there and um, support them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what else did I So I also, um, counsel and members, I also have to excuse myself. Um, I have a personal situation, so I have to st step out. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to take the remainder of my time and wish our mayor a very happy birthday. It's his birthday. Um, well, it was yesterday, I believe, right, Mayor? So, happy birthday, Mayor. Thank you, everyone. I no longer celebrate them until they come along. Uh, thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilman Carl Wright. Mayor, we'll be real quick with this. Um, Week of the People, August the 13th from 1 to 7 p.m. at Neiman Williams Park at uh, 42 Matilda Avenue. Uh, backpack giveaways, games, vendors, entertainment. Uh, worthwhile to bring the young ones out and, and have a good time. We also, same organization, Week of the People, on the 14th of August, from 2 to 7 p.m., we'll have inspirational, have an inspirational festival at Baskin Park at 7, excuse me, at 178 on Monaco Avenue. Uh, we want you to come out for that. That's one of our little parks out there. And then on the 20th, um, it's a music festival from 1 to 7 p.m. at Harvey Inman Park at 290 Loop Lane. Now, the website, is weekofthepeople.org. So it's one word, weekofthepeople.org for further information. Um, go there and, and, and 
get information. <laughs> uh, second, sister to sister, that's sister, number two, sister.org. A 5K1 walk for life, October the 1st, 2020, from 9 to 5 p.m. I want to give you the website, and that's sister to sister, number two, sister.org, and there you'll receive all the information you need uh, to sign up, give, don uh, give donations, collect money, um, and help out the screening process. You have a cancer screening process on Thursday, August the 25th from 6 to 8 p.m. You will have an uh, empowerment speaker, Jacqueline Jackson, and exercise speaker, Debbie Davis. This will all take place at 1201 Hamilton Street. Again, 1201 Hamilton Street here in Franklin Township. Uh, and I want to say the men in this room and the men in this township ought to uh, help our women make that screening because they are the ones that bear the fruit of this society, of this world. They are the women that handle business, and we need to make sure we help them take care of business. Uh, so I definitely want the men out here to make sure they take the women for that cancer screening. Also, uh, join the New Jersey Citizen Action Program. They have a weekly free home buyers program. And I want to say 30 years ago, I went to one, uh, and they gave me everything I wanted. Uh, what credit meant, uh, how much money you needed for a down payment, um, everything that you needed to know to buy a house. And it just so happened my father-in-law bought my house, but that's a good deal. Um, but I'm going to give you that website, and that's NJC. AEF.org. Again, NJCAEF.org. If you're looking to uh, do a house, that's where you want to go. Now, the last thing I want to come up with is my annual law enforcement info session. I was talking to our township manager today uh, about that, and we want to have it here in the council chambers tentatively on September 24th, Thursday. 22nd, that Thursday? Okay, so it'll be September the 22nd, and we're looking to, to tie that down, so you, I, I advise you to go to the website just to make sure, and we'll be here in the council chambers. Uh, we will have our public safety director and the sheriff in Somerset County and other law enforcement personnel that uh, Ms. Mayweather thinks that we need to uh, answer the questions of the residents here in Franklin Township. So we need you to come out, bring all your questions, bring your neighbors, come down and ask the questions that you need asked, you want answers to. And if you don't come down and ask those questions, then you're lost because you're going to call Mr. Bornlocker, you're going to burn his telephone up and ask him for that information, or you're going to call Ms. Anne Marie, or Master Clerk, and burn her phone up asking for directions. So I'm going to advise you to come. It is worthwhile um, to come to this session. Um, yours truly will be there, and we'll see how it goes. Again, this is our second annual law enforcement get together info session. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, now for my comments. Um, I guess for the next at least two days, if possibly third day, I will be at Randolph Road between sometime between 7.30 and 8.30 so I can see what's going on there. I've driven it many times at various times of the day and when I drive it, I've total of five or six times I think I've seen a total of one truck but I don't know that I've been there at that time so I will go there at that time and I will look and I, I, my bet is if the manager is hearing that I'm doing that he'll probably uh, do it too 
Well, Mr. Manager, I've been doing it for about the last six months. It's about a half a mile from my house. It's my route home. It's my route to work. I shop at ShopRite as my grocery store. Uh, my dry cleaner is at the corner of Elizabeth and Schoolhouse. Um, and, and that is a two or three time a week drop off and pick up. Uh, my pharmacy is CVS. So I, I'm in that area often. And like I said, I live an hour and a half away. So I will just continue to do what I've been doing for a number of months before this matter came to light. An hour and a half? You mean, a, I think, a mile and a half? I said I live a, about a half a mile away oh, okay. from Canal Walk. But you said you live an hour no, and a half? No, I live a half a mile <laughs> away from Canal Walk. Okay. And have, an and no, and not an hour and a half. I, I said yes. I live a half a mile away. Okay, and I will be watching the August 3rd um, planning board meeting, uh, the public session. And I will speak to whoever is appropriate to speak to after I see it for myself. Um, I, I hope you're exaggerating. I'm not saying you are. I, I hope you're exaggerating. I'm seeing heads shake no. So uh, I'm saddened by that. Uh, I was just made a chief. Uh, I wish I were made emperor. If I were made emperor, <laughs> then the B9 warehouse would go away. Um, but I'm not emperor. It's, you know, I, I'm, you're not going to want to hear this, but it, it's, it's America, and I can't stop that. We are working hard to modify it and, and minimize it. Um, I wish I could make it go away, but I'm not going to lie to you. I can't make it go away. This body can't. We, we, I mean, I can talk to this guy and find out other things we could do, but we would be doing them at at your peril and it may not make any difference but I will I will continue as I have to look and have staff look for ways that we can minimize this and if possibly make it go away we will try but I, I you know the law is the law and we have to follow the law um, it's not it's not our law to change it's the state law it's also this thing in the Constitution, the Fifth Amendment. The Fifth Amendment, well, you can put your hand to your head, but the Fifth Amendment basically says you cannot take land. You cannot take property. Ma'am, I'm not going to have a discussion with you. You cannot take property from people without just, um, without paying them back. So we are, th this is how we are limited. Again, if I were emperor, I would make it go away, but I'm not emperor. Um, Mr. Manager, your comments. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so I'll, I'll get to the nuts and bolts of government again. Um, and as much as we all don't like them, um, property tax bills are due to be mailed. Um, they are late. They are late due to the fact that the state of New Jersey was slow to uh, certify tax rates in the state, and many towns are now mailing out their tax bills for the third and fourth quarters of 2022 and the first two quarters of 2023. Um, those tax bills will be mailed um, by the 10th with the, the grace period for payment of taxes extended to September 6th. Um, if you uh, wish to pay your taxes online, you can do so now, um, and all tax information regarding the 2022-2023 tax bills is available on the Township website. Um, today, um, the Commissioner of the Department of Environmental Protection, uh, in conjunction with our Governor, uh, declared there to uh, be a statewide drought watch. Um, all residents are asked to conserve water. Um, previously, New Jersey American Water in uh, five or six counties that they provide water. We are a, a large uh, bulk purchaser from New Jersey American Water for the water uh, utility of the township. Um, they were put on odd even water days. Um, that, that has not been altered at this point. Um, however, I know a number of you uh, live in homes that have sprinkler systems. Um, if you have a sprinkler system 
and you don't need to water your grass. I think that at this point, given the, the current drought situation in the state, um, you would be encouraged not to do so. Um, we have an ordinance that does, once the, the, the level goes higher from just a drought watch to a drought warning, um, there are certain restrictions that kick in once that happens per our township ordinance. Um, if, you're, if you'd like to read that, it, it's on the township website under the code. Um, if you have sprinkler systems, um, it talks about ones that have rain gauges and coming on during certain times of the, of the day. If, if you do water your grass, um, don't water it in the heat of the day because that's a total waste. Uh, um, you know, your grass and plants and flowers should be watered early in the morning or late in the and grass not late in the evening, but early in the morning so that mold doesn't develop. Um, so that's the drought issue um, and the tax bill issue. And uh, that seems like at this point in the night what I needed to report, Mr. Mayor. So thank you. Thank you. There are no council discussion items. Um, Mr. Mayor? I'm sorry, you know, often I don't do this. It's just one thing I forgot to mention, if I could. Go ahead. Okay, thank yes. you. And I know they're not here anymore, mm -hmm. and I know this isn't the biggest issue for most people remaining, but I just wanted to acknowledge a, a East Millstone First Aid Squad. 75 years to be able to keep an organization running and alive and uh, being the, uh, one of the council liaisons to the group that... that uh, committee that's involved with the rescue squads in town. I, I just knowing what they go through to keep their numbers up and keep their volunteers. And yes, uh, Robert Wood Johnson handles the majority of calls in this town. But uh, in my opinion, them and we have a couple other squads. But today is their day for 75 years. They're God sent, and uh, I'm just really glad that they're here. I just want to add that. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, what, no, what's okay. Um, I'm going to ask for a motion to change the order of the uh, items to do CDBG. Now we have uh, personnel waiting, uh, so not keep her any longer. Do I have a motion to uh, do item number 12 now? A motion to amend. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. So we're skipping down to item number 12, Community Development Block Lab Action Plan. Yeah, you want to have the public session first, or do you want to speak? So, um, so we are um, required to have an open uh, a public hearing. This, the public hearing is specifically on community development block grant. It is not a general public hearing. Uh, do we have a motion to open to the public? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of opening to the public, say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. We're open to the public on the CDBG um, annual uh, action plan only. Anyone wishing to speak, please come to the mic. Seeing no one come forward, Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we close public session. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Um, public session on CDBG is closed. So are you looking to speak? Pull well, the mic to you. Sure. Okay. Um, the Township of Franklin uh, receives uh, money from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development annually to assist in providing services to low and moderate income residents of Franklin Township, uh, the majority of whom reside in the East Franklin portion of the township. Uh, this year, the township was awarded $312,761 for activities that would assist those residents. And we received 10 funding applications from various nonprofits in the community to provide those services. The late Lena and David T. Wallace Community uh, Senior Housing Center 
is uh, recommended to receive $44,059 for kitchen upgrades and bathroom upgrades. The Center for Great Expectations, $14,288 to install flooring at their transitional housing facility. The Sisters Network of Central New Jersey, tree removal and site revitalization, $10,000. Franklin Township Food Bank, installation of an air curtain and electrical er upgrades, $23,000. Um, Middle Earth, $4,350 for youth readiness. Home sharing, $10,000 for homeless match services. Central Jersey Housing Resource Center, $6,314. Uh, great Expectations, again, Katie's Place Child Care Program, $20,000. Franklin Food ba Bank for their community for farm, $1,500. And Sister to Sister Social Service Program, $4,750. Uh, from uh, the public notice period, uh, we had originally uh, considered putting $58,000 in our housing rehabilitation program. However, there is an urgent need over in the East Franklin area to do some sidewalk improvements in the CDBG target area. So those funds are recommended to be moved, creating uh, a pool of $111,948 for sidewalks in the East Franklin area. And we will also be reprogramming an additional $26,000 for the sidewalks as well from CBD years 2018 and 2019 for unfinished projects. Um, that is the, uh, the summary of the uh, funding um, applications that we, we will be sending to HUD tomorrow. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, I'll take them okay all right thank you and thank you for your approval so resolution 22 uh, 321 approving the, uh, the filing of the FY 2022 community development block action plan and to council do we have a motion so moved second moved and seconded any further discussion or questions <laughs> madam clerk Councilman Embarrassin? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilmember Potosnik? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Abstain. Councilman Wright? Yes. Yes. We will now go back on the agenda to approval of the minutes number 10. I have a number of minutes here. I present the following minutes to the Township Council for approval. Bear with me. Executive session, March 8th. All of these are 2022 um, work session regular meeting March 22nd work session regular meeting and executive session May 24th work session and regular meeting uh, June 14th special meeting June 20th work session regular meeting June 28th special meeting July 6th work session regular meeting July 12th and special <coughs> meeting July 19th Does anyone have any corrections Motion on the minutes. So we'll move. Second. Second. Moved seconded. Any other discussion on the minutes? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrassin? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilmember Potosnik? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes, for A through I. I'm staying for J. Councilman Mike? Yes. Over to the warrants in the amount of $26,427,788.83 on August 9th are presented to the Township Council for payment to have a motion on the minute on the warrant. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone want to pull an item or question an item? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrassin? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilmember Potosnik? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright?
We will now skip down to uh, item number 14, ordinances on introduction. Uh, we're going to skip to 13, public hearing and adoption of ordinances on second reading. First reading is when we announce to the world that we are considering an ordinance. Second reading is when we actually pass it or don't pass it, and there's a public hearing with a second reading. So we do have an item on second reading ordinance 4372-22, an ordinance amending the code of the Township of Franklin, Somerset County, State of New Jersey, more particularly Chapter 226, Vehicles and Traffic, Section 226-30, Handicap Parking, at 28 Roberts Road is presented for public hearing and final adoption. The public hearing has been noticed as required. We have a motion to open to the public. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Um, all in favor of opening to the public say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. We're open to the public on this ordinance only. Mayor, seeing when no one coming forward to speak on this ordinance on motion, we close the public portion of the hearing. Second. Moved and second. And all in favor of closing public portion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Public portion is uh, closed. We have a motion on the item. So moved. Moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrasson. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Onichapa. Yes. Councilmember Potosnik. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. So now we're on to first readings. Uh, ordinance number 4374-22, an ordinance amending the Municipal Code of the Township of Franklin County of Somerset State of New Jersey, more particularly Chapter 260, Parks and Recreation, Article 2, Parks Rules and Regulations, Section 260-6, Prohibited Activities. The foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting, publication in accordance with law, and public hearing, and final adoption at the meeting of the Township Council to be held on September 13, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers. That's September 13th, 7 p.m. right here. Um, do we have a motion on the item? Moved. Second. Moved and seconded. So, um, Democratic Party a few months ago, or actually a year ago, had a um, rally in the park, and I read the rules about it, and it said, actually said no rallies in the park, no public speaking in the park. It was written in the 60s, and completely ignored the First Amendment. So uh, I went about uh, discussing this with several people, and we're, we basically amended that, um, that ordinance in accordance with the First Amendment. Any other discussion on the item? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrasson. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Onijaka. Yes. Councilmember Potosnik. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Ordinance 4375-22, an ordinance amending the Municipal Code of the Township of Franklin County of Somerset State of New Jersey, more particularly new Chapter 235, Municipal Gazebo. The foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for Adoption on first reading and posting and publication in according with law and public hearing and final adoption out of the meeting of the Township Council to be held on September 13th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Do we have an item? So move. Second. Moved and seconded. So this basically sets the rules for uh, the use of the gazebo, uh, such as uh, no political rallies at the gazebo on primary day and on election day, and also sets the fees for renting the gazebo. Any other discussion? Mayor, I, I had a question. I read it. I don't have it in front of me. Um, the only thing, and this is a little bit of a technical issue, um, it says something about you're able to uh, attach or hang uh, banners or signs, and I'm not, uh, I'm for that. I'm not suggesting we should impede that right. Um, but 
I, it wasn't really clear, and I just didn't want groups to be like nailing or screwing in things, or, and I didn't know if there was any practical aspect of making sure that they were instructed uh, before, you know, anything would be accidentally, uh, you know, uh, you know, damaged or altered. So again, I'm all in favor of this, but I just, is there any plan relevant to that or any language that maybe should be added? Part of the permit process, Councilman, and, and they're only allowed to temporarily affix it to the building while they have a permit for the use of the gazebo. Okay, so it, there will be no confusion. Any group would know. It's they, part of the permit application. It, sa it will say it on the application. Okay, so it'll be explained there. Okay, just wanted to make sure we have mm -hmm. a beautiful gazebo and I support this. They have to put a $300 refundable deposit for... Wait, I saw that also, but of course trying to avoid anybody losing a deposit. Okay, thank you, manager. I didn't... You never welcome. applied for a permit for that, so I didn't know. Thank any you. Other, any other discussion? <laughs> Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrassing? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilmember Patasnik? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Um, an ordinance number 4376-22, an ordinance amending the code of the Township of Franklin County, Somerset State of New Jersey, more particularly Chapter 50, Police Department, Section 50-7, Ranking Officers, Applicable Regulations, Sections 50-11, Promotion to Sergeant and Lieutenant, and Section 50-12, Promotion to Captain, the foregoing ordinance. Is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting, and publication in accordance with law and public hearing and final adoption at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on September 13th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Do I have a motion on the item? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, so this really is just a cleaning up of language in our regulations, part of... Um, language that needs to be changed because we used to have a police chief, now we have a public safety director. Any other discussion? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrassin? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onichaka? Yes. Councilmember Patazzi? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Ordinance uh, 4377-22, an ordinance to amend the municipal code Chapter 226, Vehicles and Traffic, more particularly Code Section 226-10, stopping or standing pro prohibited at all times on certain streets, adding Metler's Road. The foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting, and publication in accordance with law and public hearing and final adoption at a meeting of the Township Council to be held on September 13th, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the council chamber. So we have a motion on the item. So move. Second. Uh, moved and seconded, and I think it's pretty straightforward. There will be no standing or stopping on Metler Road. Part of our traffic control in the area. Any other discussion? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrassin. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilmember Potosnik? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Ordinance number 4378-22, an ordinance of the Township Council of Frank, Town, the Township of, Sum, of Franklin, Somerset County, State of New Jersey, granting a sump pump easement to Fanner uh, Fernandez Nunez for the purpose of constructing a sump pump discharge pipe to an existing inlet for 16 Woodward Road, also known as Block 380, Lot 13, of um, on the tax map of uh, Franklin Township, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey. The foregoing ordinance is presented to Township Council for adoption and first reading, posting, and publication in accordance with law and public hearing and final adoption at a meeting of the Township Council on September 13th. 2022 at 7 p.m. in the council chambers. There's um, an extra O, or there's an O in map of Franklin. Thank you. Uh, do we have a motion on the item? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. This is to cure a local problem of 
uh, a sump pump discharge. Any other discussion? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrasson. Yes. Councilwoman Francois. Yes. Mayor Kramer. Yes. Councilman Onijaka. Yes. Councilmember Potosnik. Yes. Councilman Vassanella. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Ordinance 4379-22, an ordinance of the Township of Franklin, Count, Township of Franklin, Somerset County, authorizing a re referendum on the establishment of a community energy aggregation program. Foregoing ordinance is presented to the Township Council for adoption on first reading, posting, and publication in accordance with the law and public hearing and final adoption at the meeting of the Township Council to be held on September 13th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in Council Chambers. Do we have a motion on the item? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. So energy aggregation is where a town gets together and uh, with that large numbers has the bargaining power to go out to bid to see if they can get reduced energy costs and clean energy um, agreements with the whoever's uh, supplying power to the town. This, uh, if it were to go into, a, and what the plan here is, is to send this out to referendum. If it were to pass council and then pass referendum, um, the idea would be that we would only accept it if there's a 5% savings better than PSC and G, that there's a 10% um, greater renewable energy uh, our clean energy allegation uh, than 10% greater than what is required by the state, so which for now would be about 34%. Um, and there will also be an option for people to, at a, uh, additional cost, um, go uh, request 100% renewable uh, energy uh, instead of the 34%. Uh, that would be required to um, in any bid specification that we received. Um, so, uh, are there any other discussion item? Any other discussion on this item? I just don't see in here anywhere where it says thirty. But it, what it says is ten percent greater than the state. Um, yeah. What's the wording? Renewable portfolio standard. Right. Yes. And, and a uh, Councilwoman, the uh, and the state has has a energy master plan in which they the targets as to when they are going to do that. So we're just fixing it to the state. But the ten percent means which is okay. right, which is currently twenty four percent. So Correct. that makes the thirty four percent. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion items? Um, Mr. Attorney, there was a question about that. The hundred percent that it wasn't clear that the hundred percent would not be required to save five percent in uh, savings. So, if it's a hundred percent renewable, uh, is that going to be required to be at a five percent savings over PSC? No. So th the way the way it works is that the adopted uh, you'll go out to bid for for whatever the the. Uh, Aggregation contract is presumably you'll get a um, in a bid that is more than a five percent saving. Um, that bid will have to have in it an option for people to one hundred percent clean energy. So, so the answer is that those two things are not they're, they're mutually exclusive. Okay. Um, any other discussion or question? I, I just want to thank the committee that uh, put forth the petition for working together with the council to come up with a really aggressive, uh, appropriate question for the public to respond to, and we we'll hope they'll be supportive as we are tonight. So if this passes, we'll get cheaper energy and cleaner energy. Um, and any other discussion? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrasson? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilmember Potosnik? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Thank you. It passes. So I can't see it from here, but if you would be good enough to sign that document, then you will not have the um, 
county clerk pulling his hair out, wondering, wondering what he's going to do with two uh, ordinances. All right, we are now on to the consent agenda. Items A through AE is listed on the consent agenda portion of the meeting are presented to Township Council for adoption. We have a motion on the consent agenda. So moved. We have a second. second. I'll second it, said. Okay. Um, moved and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone want to pull an item or discuss an item? Uh, Mr. Mayor, just a quick uh, for the township manager. 22305 authorization contract for services, New Jersey Department of Community Affairs, Low Item. Income Household Water Assistance Program. Item P. So there was a program that's being funded by the American Rescue Plan to supplement those people who meet certain income requirements that were not able to pay their water bill during the pandemic and, uh, and accumulated uh, arrears for their water bill. Um, there was a, a number of people who applied to, uh, to receive funding from the state, uh, which is passed through uh, from the American Rescue Plan for up to $1,500 in assistance on their uh, arrears for their water bill. And this will um, allow us to enter into that agreement with the state of New Jersey so that they can um, apply those funds to some of our uh, <coughs> customers who are not able to pay their water bills and meet the income requirements. I just want to say that was an excellent program and I'm glad you brought it to us. Um, everybody can use a hand sometime. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Madam Clerk. Councilman Emerson? Yes. Councilwoman <laughs> Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilman Repetosnik? Yes. Councilman Vassanella? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. And uh, we have no resolutions to be voted on separately. Uh, item number 17, boards, uh, commissions, committees, do we have any nominations? Mayor, I have one. Yes. <clears throat> so the chairman of the uh, Human Resources Commission has asked <clears throat> us to approve uh, nominating Damayanti Chivakula uh, to be a commissioner in HR. So I nominate her to be a commissioner. Any other nominations for the same position? Any other nominations? There's only one nomination. We can do it by acclamation. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Congratulations, Deviante. We have no executive session. Do we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Moved and second. All in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. We are adjourned. Be well, Franklin. Good night. <laughs>